I don't see why we wouldn't be. I don't either. Somebody of our talent, our multi-talent. <sighs> it's been kind of a long day. Yeah, it has. There I go. No, it ain't me, is it? Uh, you ain't got much use for them. No, I was. Mean, if you don't like that, you know. Are we on? Yeah, we're on. Hey, folks. Welcome to UGG. Don't TV. tell them where we're at. <laughs> Welcome to UGG. We're very, very pleased to be with you. And uh, if you got anything you want us to hammer and knock around, just give us a call. That's 423-562-2676. If you or want to you, keep up uh, with the... Or tomorrow, if you need to borrow some money, call 562-2676. <laughs> I won't be here. Uh, if you uh, want to keep up with the local news and, and, and non-local news, if it's kind of interesting and pertaining to this area or you, go to lafollynews.com. We've got the latest obituary report, most, most comprehensive and up-to-date obituary report in, in the county. But you can't beat it, you know, no, no. No point in going and changing channels on TV and trying to pick up this, that, and the other. Just go to uh, thefollicnews.com and you can get anything from the weather report right on up to what gold and silver is bringing. We would also like to offer our condolences to those candidates who chose not to be on the Wild Bob Ronnie show and got beat. And we'd also like to ask those of you who got elected and chose not to be on the Wild Bob Ronnie Show, how in the devil you done it? <laughs> they did it the hard way, didn't they? They did. One time the hard way. So, uh, old Weston Wamp got beat, but I bet, he, I bet he'll think twice about coming here again. <laughs> yeah, Weston told him on Fox News, that we take our politics serious here in Campbell County. Well, something like that. So, and, what have you been up to, Bob? Well, I've been working a little bit, you know, with produce and some uh, uh, furniture and some baby items, that sort of thing. We've got a good selection uh, uh, at Bob's Emporium of anything from refrigerators to washing machines to to dryers. I don't have any cook stoves right at the moment. Uh, I may, if you if you want a propane cook stove, real nice one, I think I'll have one coming in tomorrow. And uh, to me, that's the way to go. Uh, you, can, uh, you can set your 100 gallon tank out there and you'll probably cook your meals just about uh, for many, many months. I want a propane driven air conditioner and then I'll be set up. Well, you would foot pedals for the fan. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't care to have a propane uh, generator, sure enough. Right. Well, you know, that's, that's really no problem because they'll run just as good off of propane as well off of gasoline. Yes, you have to have a different and, fueling system. Huh? You have to have a different fueling system. Uh, well, <laughs> you can't put the propane in your regular tank. You have to have the tank, but you're going to have to have a propane carburetor and a propane expander, or whatever I, they call I it. I believe uh, uh, you've got to have the expander. I know that. But I believe that uh, basically uh, uh, you got to have the thing that when the pressure, we don't need the pressure, it'll back off on the carburetor and that sort of thing. But I understand it's not all that hard to do it. They advertise them but not much different than the price uh, of regular gasoline driven. You reckon I can get a propane jet ski? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. That's that right. I'd put lights on it and everything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, a propane to me, I'm, I'm, I'm setting up one of my apartments out the house, and uh, it'll be heated by propane. We'll cook by propane. I already have a propane refrigerator. Uh, my uh, lights and my te uh, t 
television and uh, satellite and everything will be powered by solar and batteries. And uh, so, uh, you know, you don't, you don't have a whole lot of uh, uh, power expenditure if you put the right kind of lights in there. And, uh, and you can get, what do you call these little lights that don't take much juice? A little ladder, man. And I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of about mine. An LED. I'm gonna let it shine. LED, huh? LED, yeah, light LED, emitting LED, LED lights, you know. And uh, you know, you can get a whole string of LED lights to go around your house if you want to. And uh, why would you want to? Well, a lot of people like to have lights on the outside, you know. And uh, of course, you can uh, you can go now. They have a very reasonable price. You have your solar lights at. Uh, or your walkways and that sort of thing. And uh, so uh, there's any number of ways you can do it to cut down on your utilities. And uh, so I'm going to go with uh, an apartment out there that's going to be completely off the grid. And uh, uh, we'll have no, uh, no need for any of the uh, common utilities that uh, uh, you, are, you have in your home. You're going to have them uncommon utilities, ain't you? Yeah, it's going to be uncommon. Uncommonly uncommon. So I'm looking forward to, uh, I'm, in fact, I started on it some this morning, uh, getting all that done. Well, other than that, you know, uh, uh, I heard somebody say today that this was a government-made recession. And well, I agree with them. Right. I agree with them. This is a government-made recession. And uh, I was talking to someone, actually my daughter, who uh, she thinks she's uh, uh, more or less a, an academic uh, uh, political scholar. And even though she's uh, never been out and in the real life world very much, but I told her, I said, without, if we had not had the federal government diving into the real estate market, if you had not had Barney Frank and Chris Dodd putting pressure on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to make loans to people that had no business getting loans to buy a house. They had no reasonable expectations of ever being able to repay what they were lent. The real estate market was already a pretty good sized bubble. I've always felt that real estate throughout this country has been overpriced. And then when the federal government came in with all of this loose money, loose credit, and expanded the real estate market, it was asking for nothing but trouble. And trouble we got because we compounded that not only with the uh, real estate bubble that burst. Busted. But then they busted. Then they then I forgot who my audience was. Uh, you, you compounded that with uh, your uh, money market, where they let them start uh, loaning on these derivatives, and derivatives means there is no value there. That we got fruit flies, folks. Yeah, there's no value there when you loan on these derivatives that you could ever take back if there were a default. Uh, there's nothing there. All it is, they're swapping paper and everybody's making a commission on each side. It's like them guys kept trading that same mule. <laughs> a mule died and they lost their whole business. Yeah. One of them traded it off somebody else. The other and said, well, how are we going to make a living now? <laughs> well, you, you know, Believe me, I, when I came up here 13 years ago, we rode around, looked, well, I didn't work the first couple of years to come up here. Uh, 
I didn't hold a job or anything. Didn't have a business. And uh, riding around. Been right better off you'd have kept that record pristine. <laughs> uh, riding around, and uh, Elizabeth says, "How do people make a living up here?" I said, it's "Simple." I said, "This week they sell to that one, and next week they sell it back to to the one they bought it from, and they, they keep the money in circulation that way." And that's about the way it is up here. I was noticing in the balancing of the budget which I commend whoever it is that balanced the budget. What budget? Uh, what budget? The county budget. Oh. Where they did not have to have a tax increase, which I never talked to. Have. They didn't have to have one when that new bunch went in about two or three years ago. But I noticed, rather than Jeff Marlowe reducing the size of his office staff, any at all, he cut the industrial recruiter's position out. Which, you know, that's not such a big thing because actually that's something that the county mayor ought to be doing anyhow. I don't know what in the world we're paying him $100,000 a year. That's about what he gets with all of his perks and everything. I wonder where we're paying him $100,000 a year if he does not have the ability to go out there and recruit uh, in industry and bring them into the county. Well, Bob, you just don't have any appreciation of the demands of that office. Well, I know that uh, uh, the hours are such that it interferes with watching the soap operas in the afternoon. Well, that's demanding. Yeah, I know. You that, gotta that's know what's happening on the old and reckless. That's hard on a man's. Uh, You're well started on soap operas. That's what we old need and to, reckless. Right. Well, you know, uh, uh, rather than the young and the restless, how about the old and tired? Old and reckless. Yeah, old and tired is what I like. Yeah, uh, okay, then you just have to get your own show. <laughs> I can't. By the way, this got a hot. Note here, right off the press, says Dixie Concrete's got some concrete left. Well, I don't know. I met two of their trucks uh, coming coming up the hill when I come back from the farm today. They got some more. Oh, okay. I was a little bit concerned. Well, you ought to be, because everybody wants them. Of it. It's so hard, you know. Yeah, they were coming up the hill with those massive trucks, and I just cruised right on by them. I had no worries at all that they were going to run over me. Right on up the hill they go. I'll, let me tell you something. They are such careful drivers. I wave at the, you know, all of them when I see them. They got both hands on the steering wheel. And their shoulder right, right back. I know that. I just wondered if their nose itches like mine, if they could take this, uh, wh uh, I would take it off the steering wheel and scratch their nose. I bet they wouldn't do it. I bet they'd let their nose itch. I bet they would. Yeah. If they had fruit flies in that cap, <laughs> they'd learn to do something. Dixie Concrete is a good company, a well-run company. They do what they say they're going to do. good runners hold up. They do what they say they're going to do. They, they price their products uh, as cheap as they can do it and still make money. And they got good back. products. They got good safety tanks. They got the stuff that goes in the field lines. They got everything under the sun, concrete, except steps. But if you farm them up, they'll help you pour it in the hole. Right, yeah, they will. They'll do that. And, and we don't have to check this gun out situ gun out situation out. And another thing, I'd like to recommend that you get your propane for your propane forklift. I mean, your propane jet ski and your propane generator and your propane kitchen stove, Cook stove. and your propane Heater. everything from down at right. Digger's Propane. That's Wilson's right. Gas down right. there in Sawmill saw Holler, right. right in the middle of the road, 562544. That's for all your propane needs, and he can fix your appliances usually. Most appliances, uh, believe it or not, I'm not throwing, making any disparaging remarks about uh, gas heaters, but you know they're very, very simple operating uh, a piece of equipment. It's basically a burner, 
uh, it's got a regulator and it's got a thermal cup. Well, there's a whole lot to know about making them work right though, especially mm -hmm. The well, drills he stuff. knows enough of that not to light that torch I got. I was going to say, now he can fix it, but he may not light it for you. <laughs> but the digger can fix about anything, because say, if there's a breakdown, a lot of times it's a thermal coupling, uh, or it could be uh, maybe your uh, regulator's not putting out uh, enough propane to keep the flame burning. If you've got a propane vacuum cleaner, a uh, digger can fix it. I, I guarantee you. I bet he's never seen one, but I bet he can fix it. I bet it. he can fix it. But, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, have uh, gas furnaces in their house. I used to work on them. And, uh, Is that uh, why you left North Carolina? I, <laughs> I, I got blowed out of there. But, <laughs> no, you know, a lot of times when, when the, back when I was working on them, uh, they, uh, most of them had pilots. You know, they were not uh, uh, electronically uh, lit. They, the pilot stayed lit all the time. And uh, a lot of times when they come on, they'd go boom, you know, because you had late ignitions. What you did, you had a gas build up when it come You up. know what uh, 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 Kingfish told Andy is wrong with him? Why? Told him he had mild ignition. <laughs> yeah, I guarantee you. Well, get an uh, uh, these uh, these new ones are pretty well fine tuned. It's almost like when they change from points and descriptors to your coil pack on your cars. You know, uh, uh, it's that, that much improvement on uh, on gas furnaces, whether it be uh, uh, your natural gas or whether it be your propane. <laughs> So I know a little bit about that stuff. You, you know, know about mild ignition. I don't think you. I don't think you won't be working on on your heaters. Mild ignition. Well, maybe not. But if you can't get your stove lit, you can always go by a Rainbow Restaurant and right. get your breakfast. They will cook your breakfast for you. That's what I did about this the morning. Speed hump, dip, hump, dip, hump, dip, hump, I, dip. I went out about seven o'clock, and. Uh, <laughs> I needed a bailing machine after I got through mowing that yard out there. <laughs> I, I Boy, I, man, is that high. I, I believe I could have bailed up a few bales of hay. I know and, I uh, could. Uh, I got two out there. I got hay in the yard. Right. I just kept me a path around through them. Right. Well, I got, I got it mowed, but I went by rainbow and got me one of those scrumptious, delicious, delectable. Nutritious. Steak biscuits. Oh, yeah, them was good. You know, the best they ever had was the first one. They overcooked it. They thought it was crunchy. And I just loved it. I ain't never had one that good since. Right. I, I like, mean, they're I all like good. Them. I like them well done. They're all good, but boy, that is good. Now, I don't like, I like rare to medium rare steaks, but that breaded steak sandwich... Right. Where they where they where they brown that crust real good. Right. The meat's still tender inside, right. but that crust is good and crunchy. It wasn't burned. It's just crunchy, and right. I, that's just awful good. Right. I had some good eating down there. Stuck in that big old eat. biscuit about that big. Yeah. yeah. Looked like a frisbee. Yeah. Up the road, me and my little uh, chihuahuas went this morning. And every once in a while, I'd tear them off a little piece of that. Not much. I'd tear them off a little piece of that biscuit. He gave him a little bite of it, but most of it I ate myself because I bought it for myself. Well, when you're a dog and somebody in the crew has got a steak biscuit, you find out how much you loved. Right, is that, that right? You find out not too much. It appears that way. <laughs> that, that's the place to go. Go buy a rainbow restaurant. I don't care. You go. You go by at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning. You won't catch them. I mean, sitting right asleep. there on dead ready. Uh, they have whatever you need ready to go. You can go in and eat. They got a buffet. They can just sit there and chow down all you want to. I guarantee you, if your capacity is great enough, you won't have to eat for one meal a day. Yeah, that's right. And you can go down there and hit their breakfast special for two ninety nine and have plenty to eat. So, you Bob. You get a bologna biscuit also for 99 yeah, cents. That's right. Did you know that the city election qualifying date is quickly approaching? I know that. And if uh, 
I'm going to run for anything besides the county line. Uh, I'm going to have to go ahead and do my dues. So, uh, I'm, waiting well, for you're ready, you're ready. I'm waiting for a groundswell uh, uh, people begging me to enter this fray. Do you suppose you can... Boy, these fruit flies are bad. Do you, you suppose you can get a... Anybody to sign your petition it takes 25 people. Uh-oh. That one might be a problem. I'm sorry, Matt. Yeah. Maybe do you reckon I couldn't use that old petition I had? Um, I don't know. I doubt it. I seen when the deadline was here. It's, I, I mean, don't know 25 people that knows how to read and write. You don't know 25 people that would sign it, either. I will do something. Yeah, I need to enter the race, I guess, give people some, something to aim at. It's kind of hard to go hunting if you ain't got nothing to shoot at. You going to run for mayor or city council? Uh, no, I might got any opposition. I don't know. Ain't nobody decided yet. Not so far. Well, I expect my God to have somebody that uh, as an alternative to uh, somebody that don't know what's going on down there. Well, you're definitely an alternative. Huh? I said you are definitely. Qualifying deadline is August 16th. That's 10 days from right. yesterday, nine days from today. Well, I say, if I can get two people a day, I see the day's what, the 7th? You got that nine days. You're gonna I, have to get three people a day. Get three two people. Of them lying about where they live. <laughs> All right, four people. Three people. Yeah. Well, three nines is twenty-seven. Yeah. You're gonna okay. have twenty-five. All right. You? Okay. I give you two spurs. Yeah. I'm sure they will contest your <laughs> qualification. Every, every one of them they'll contest it. You know. Uh, so uh, I'm no, sure. you tell you what. My boat ain't for sale now, but it can be rented. I, I might, I might need to rent that thing. You might need to rent a few more. <laughs> oh, you know. Uh, now don't let it go to your head like some people. What? You know, you can take getting elected. You know, you take a good man, good family man, good dependable uh, man, and, and it just ruins him. He, he loses his head. He, 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 he's got no sense. He forgets his friend. I just don't know who will be his friend when he ain't in office anymore because they ain't going to care nothing about him once pat him on the back now. <laughs> no, just cast him to one side, you know, just like he never existed. You know, I, the, the old, I see poor old Cliff wandering down. Well, now, he's coming back. That's the next move. Uh, huh? That's the next move. Hey, uh, he's not coming back, but he's going for other appointments right, after his man gets in. Right, well, I see him wandering around down at the flea market, you know. He don't have an entourage, <laughs> you know. He don't have a police escort? No, or? he doesn't have a police escort. In fact, he looks plumb lonely walking around down there. Carrying his cap? Uh, I think he gave that to Tip. Well, I just wondered, because, you know, he showed off on how dirty your house was. I just wondered if he was spitting the, park spit, spit he in spit in the parking lot. <laughs> Uh, that kind of backfired on him a little bit. He'd see mine, he, he'd have plenty to talk about. Uh, that kind of backfired on him a little bit when we went out there and filmed, you know. Done that investigative reporting. Right. We're going to do some more of that just right soon. Well, you know, I think I want to do a little investigative reporting on the status of the uh, school buses uh, and... Uh, uh, whether or not we're getting our money's worth. Well, I've got something else I'm after. I want to see, do a little bit of investigating about how some of our money was spent. Right, okay. Well, that's part of it, you know. If we spend more on uh, uh, we got to see. We got to. We got to see our lawyer right soon too. Yeah, we got. We need to do that. Uh, we might want to do it. We can you do it tomorrow. I might. 
If I can, I can do it next Wednesday. Okay, I can do it next one here. I can do it next one. I got to get some paperwork together so I can well, present my yeah, case. I got, I got to get some too on part of it. Got to check with my psychiatry so right. he can testify as to my mental anguish. Right, yeah, yeah. I've been in terribly bad shape. I'm going to have to get married too so she can testify of my lack of capability right. since I'm such a right. nervous wreck. Right. Well, no, I don't think that would work for me. <laughs> yeah, too bad. <laughs> Been denied my husbandly duties. But there's somebody. All right. Probably a wrong number. Ugh, TV. Ugh, TV. Doing no community watching tonight? No, not tonight. I'm, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm getting uh, just too hot to sit out there. Well, that's what you're supposed to do get out there and <clears throat> strengthen the bonds of the community by sitting on the porch. <laughs> no, this is a national night out or something like that. Yeah. You're just not being patriotic or something like that. We ain't sitting on the porch either. It's raining many ago. Hey, it's sunshine pretty up here and everything. No wind to blow. A little bit on the hot side. The humidity is pretty high. Well, it's cool off toward the end of the week. Pardon? Supposed to cool off toward yeah, the so end of the week. Yeah, it's going to cool on down here about, I think, starting Friday. They've not found us, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are they looking for a lot out there? Well, what it is, we've got that there cloaking system. It's hard to see us. Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, when are you getting your eyes fixed? Well, when I went down to the doctor down there, they uh, found that I had a bacterial infection in my eye. And they said it takes about two months to clear it up. And they give me some uh, antibiotics to put in my eyes. And then uh, they just get to where I can't even uh, hardly uh, see the stuff on TV. You and, can't uh, thread needles anymore? Pardon me, no, Lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you boys getting your eyes fixed. I reckon I have to go get my ears fixed. Huh? Uh, huh? Bob had one and he lost it. <laughs> I got a special offer in the mail yesterday to go up to whatever it's called and get you a hearing check. You want to go up there and use my letter? I don't need my check. I know it's bad. Well, there's a lot of things a man don't want to hear. <coughs> It's what? That happens a lot in this county. Oh, yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. How'd you come out in the election? Oh, well, uh, uh... Win a few and lose a few? Yeah, win a few and lose a few. Uh, Dennis got in. That's, that's good. Too bad Martin beat the uh, Tony, but, uh, I guess people like to have races out in their, their homes. You need to be more concerned about them people down there that set the tax rate. That's where the increase is going to come in. Of course, we got them scared off this year, but they come back next year. Oh, I'll guarantee it. I'll guarantee it. Now, they ain't, they're going to lay low until after election. Yeah, well. You know that. I can do it every year. 
Yeah, you but know. you just got to yeah. think, it'll be for the children. Everything's for the yeah. children. Yeah, everything's for the kids. They don't think about the adults, you know. So, now, you need to think about the kids, but sometimes you got to think about the adults, too, and the elderly. Well, you know, if the children can't go home, because the home's gone, they can't get nothing to eat because they can't afford to buy it. They ain't, that education that ain't working out so good anyway ain't going to do them no good. They done starve to death for graduation day. Well, about like I've always said, you know, last year we graduated at somewhere close to 300 students, and there's not 300 jobs in the whole county. No. <laughs> oh, I know I looked up jobs for uh, La Follette, and every, <laughs> every one of them was out of town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're well, celebrating a few jobs coming out of the county. Right. right. I, I mean, that's pretty bad when the local newspaper has to celebrate jobs that are coming to a nearby county. Well, we still ain't got them jobs that we promised, have we? Well, I was worried about them shovel-ready jobs that wasn't shovel-ready, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, uh-uh. No, uh-uh. Nope, sure what, and I don't see none coming either. I don't see no kind of industry at all coming in here. It's like I said before, they're going to make this resort community. Yeah, have our. I got our no money to resort to them. <laughs> and wanting our kids to work work for a little bit of nothing. You know, I don't understand that. That's all I hear about four or five years ago is we need to build up our tourism and. That's the future for this county. If we get all that money, we won't have we won't have any plants and stuff polluting the water and the air, and we won't have all that. But we'll have it. And I'm this is old dumb hillbilly, but I tried to point out to people that when times got hard, the first thing that disappeared was leisure spending. Right. All right. I guess they don't realize that down there, though. You got county too. Down my north, Dan. You, you got dock people, uh, a resort and buying scrap and everything else to make a living. Times is hard. That's right. Drug dealers and 
thieves out of here. The rogues. Uh, get enough to tell I get out. I get out at night when I, I have somebody go with me, buddy of mine. We go out kind of nosing around. Well, I don't know what happens next, man. You'll be shooting one of them Trayvon. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I won't pull my weapon. The only thing, uh, the only duty uh, the neighborhood uh, crime watch has is to call a report. You're not supposed to stop, do nothing. Just keep it going and report. That's all. If you pull, pull your weapon out, then you're going against the law. That's what that. Unless somebody jumps on you. Then you just insert yourself. Right. So well, you, well, who would you get to argue some rocks? I would get that there, Mike, what's his name? Mike, that's in blue truck. You know what I'm talking about? Sure. Uh, yeah, you're talking about that, the 87124. Yeah, yeah. down here at uh, uh, Save a Lot, you know what I'm talking about? And, uh, no digging, huh? No digging, right, okay. And uh, I found out the uh, gentleman that runs it, he, you know what his first name is? Bob? Mike. Oh. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I told him, uh, so I said, I didn't know your name was Mike. He said, yes, Mike. I said, you look a bit Irish. <laughs> what do you say? He liked. Did you ask him if his last name was Patel? Probably. I think that your name, you're, you're, uh, if you're an engineer, you've got one last name. If you're a service person, you've got another last name. If you're a preacher, you got another right. name. Right, right. I think all of the, the, Right. Yeah, well, I told him, you know, that I had steak the other night that I hope I didn't eat his grandma. I bet you did. <laughs> I hope you didn't, did you? <laughs> well, Ain't well, that well, that but, but you know, but you know, you know these yeah. uh, uh, white supremacist group went up and shot that yeah, silk camp, that silk cool. camper. But they don't realize silks are not Muslim. Yeah, no. uh, they're uh, different. Uh, group no, of people all together. No, there you go. And uh, yeah, about all of them are doctors or some type of service person there, you know, and uh, uh, but they shot what to kill six of them? I think so. Yeah. Well, maybe that's counting them. I'm not sure. Right, huh? I don't know they killed five and then got killed or killed six and him. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. No, no, shot, shot that off for what, eight times? Well, all of them I know, all of them I know are pretty good people, you yeah, know. And, uh, well, you got good people, bad people, and all, all racist, you know. Well, they got the same something like that happens, they blame it on the gun. Well, I want to ask you something. What are they going to do if they had their wish? What would they do? Outlaw guns? Well, you know, uh, Justice, they... uh, Justice Scalia, mm -hmm. he went public out there and said that the federal government was going to come for your guns as soon as they could. I didn't hear that. I heard he said that the state had enough power to do more than they were no. doing. No. Well, I know that. I'm not saying that they that, that will happen. But uh, but what I, I'm saying is, 
they want to outlaw guns, but ain't it already against the law to murder people? Oh, yeah. Yeah, why is it? You know, the same thing, uh, they think by passing another law, you know, that uh, it'll take care of everything. But uh, as I understand the uh, uh, problem you have, that uh, by vesting so much prob uh, so much power in the United Nations, that by treaty with the United Nations outlawing small arms, Mm -hmm. that they conceivably could send the United Nations troops in here and take your guns away from you. Yeah, I understand. But they tabled that treaty. Pardon? They tabled that treaty? Oh. For now. You mean the United States tabled our vote on it, or the United Nations? The United States passed on voting. It, it's not going to be... They're not going to do it right now. They'll sneak it in just... About the same time they build that their hotel down there at North, they'll slide it all in together. Right, yeah. yeah, I know that. You know, we still, we still got all that to look forward to, you know. We got uh, uh, them trying to go behind the United States Constitution and go through the United Nations. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, frankly, I am convinced we need to pull out of the United States, the United Nations. It's an ineffectual, uh, uh, money-grabbing, anti-American organization. Well, yeah, of course we should pull out, but are we going to? No, don't think so. What does Scalia say there? Well, I'll tell you what he said. He's talking about the... Uh, uh, Let's see here. The gun legislation. Yep. Let's see here if I can make this thing work. Yeah. We put those things on see if you get any feedback from Mars. Mars? Uh, We've uh, got a pillar walking around up there now. Is that why? We've got a machine up there walking around. Oh, yeah. yeah that's well, right. I've left the battery on. Find that get... thing right down, you know. Uh, Thing weighs about uh, over a ton. I know it. They sent it a long way up there to ease it down too, didn't they? Uh, yeah. Bungee cord. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna tune in and see what Justice Scalia uh, is uh, trying to out on the gun control legislation. You know. What I can say this. Like it ought to be said, we, we, have, we have one of the most unique systems in this country, completely unheard of in anywhere else in the world other than what uh, England, Great Britain used to have. And they're bragging about London being such a great multinational, multicultural city anymore, which means that. London has become nothing, is the way I look at it. But we have such a unique system here where we are guaranteed by our Constitution the right to bear arms. With that said, you can come to Tennessee and it's illegal to carry a gun that's got bullets in it unless you have special permission from the state. And the Second Amendment to the Constitution says the right to bear arms shall not be uh, infringed upon in any manner. Here, Scalia. Uh, I see him, yeah. I recognized him a while ago. I thought He's it was talking. I thought it was Russ He's talking. I thought it was Russ Limbaugh, but I wasn't sure. But he's talking to you, he ain't talking to me. He's talking to them. Uh, is he talking to them? Yeah. You got him talking to them. Okay, well, you got that uh, microphone up there. Well, Scalia, he's a pretty deep thinker. Yeah, but what do you mean on this gun, this gun thing? Is he saying the states have the right to regulate? I guess maybe they do. States have the right to what? Regulate guns? The states have more authority to regulate than the federal government does. I don't know. Well, possibly. 
I'll say that's true. <clears throat> but it doesn't say, uh, it's not regulation of. I arms. guess you'll just have to listen to Bob, folks. No, what I'm saying is not. Give me your thinking on this. It's not regulation of guns and infringement upon the rights of our arms. I would think so. Would you think that the requirement for a citizen to prove to the state that he has the right to carry a gun and infringement on the Second Amendment. Well, I would say that. I don't know whether you can get them to say that or not. No, they, no they've said the opposite uh, in their legislation. You know, they said a well-regulated militia. They didn't say anything about regulating guns, did they? No, they said well-regulated militia, not, uh, uh, not guns. And uh, if they require you to prove that you have uh, the ability uh, and uh, wherewithal to carry a gun with bullets in it. See, the onus should be on the government to prove that you don't have the right to carry. Is the onus the opposite of the office? I don't know. Was the onus or or? I mean, I've heard of office. So I just wondered if the onus was the well, office. I don't know. I have no idea. But the government should have to prove that you don't have the right to carry a gun. You shouldn't have to prove to the government that you do have the right because the Second Amendment gives you that right automatically. And uh, then if they don't want you to have a gun... I don't they, agree with that. Huh? I don't agree with that. Well, what don't you agree? I don't think the Second Amendment gives you the right to bear arms. Well, what does... Uh, I uh, think it's a God-given right and that it this spells out some of the details. Well, that may possibly be, you know, uh, even though uh, uh, you didn't find too many guns in the Garden of Eden. No, but they had to have something to fight them snakes with. Uh, well, they didn't fight them, they joined them. Oh, yeah, well, I guess that's right, yeah. ain't it? No, but you know, I've never seen a snake eat an apple, have you? No, have you been up to Nafarada Parks lately? N yeah, I have. have uh, I, let me tell you, folks. They got more specials going up there than Carter's got peanuts. That's a different Carter. Huh? That's a different Carter. I remember when we had all them my liver pills. Well, yeah, but you know, uh, yeah, I'm talking about a different Carter. Yeah, yeah, That's peanuts. Yeah. You know, he's going to... I got, gonna... I've got that old special in the back of my... It's in my brook. Okay, not my truck. It's in my brook. I might get it. You ain't looking. Right. And... Uh, I got five quarts of oil, Napa premium grade motor oil, and an oil filter for my little Dodge Dakota. And I'm going to break down just out of pure. Uh, no count uh, me. Now I have, uh, I guess, what do you call it when you're. Uh, I, I have abused that truck so much, it deserves an oil change. I reckon it does. Ain't right. it? How long been since you changed it? I don't remember. It sure has had hell for you. I'll tell you but that. it doesn't use a drop well, of oil. two things on it that match and ain't bent. <laughs> but I've got one of those. It was with tax and everything. It was $18 or something for five quarts of oil and a filter. Now, you can't beat that. No. That's Napa Auto Parts, yeah. right across from IGA. Just wheel right on in there, whether you need uh, automatic transmission fluid, or whether you need something to flush your radiator, whether you need motor oil, whether you need a battery. Still got long more batteries without that uh, additional mail in rebate uh, for $27. And I might mention. Not trying to cut nap out of any business, but I got some good used batteries. I got some side posts and I got some top posts. I don't know who invented the side post, but I bet he's the same guy that invented the Phillips screw. <laughs> you know, Phillips screw is a great invention, but back whenever I used to deal with them so much, they always seized. They put them in that loom, you know, 
they'd yeah. seize and you couldn't get them out. <laughs> I reckon they just put in there to stay. Try to take a tail light limbs off and, right. you, and try to take a, a headlight rim off. You remember right. them? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I do. But uh, Napa, uh, you got the number there, 566 The number is 562-9406 or 562-2529. Okay. Now, if you call 562-2526, you get the mayor of the county. You get the county mayor. Well, don't call him. He don't know about oil changing. Well, don't call don't call him after twelve o'clock because he's watching soap operas. Five six two two five two nine or nine four zero six. Right. I I heard he almost had a, a nervous breakdown when all my children went off there. I can understand that. Well, what days of our lives would do to him? Yeah, I don't know. It's terrible. As the world turns. Right. Some of them done gone, ain't they? Uh huh. Most of them's off, ain't they? Yeah, yeah. Completely new generation. Did that old girl, she finally got a daytime Emmy, didn't she? The one I think she did. One, yeah. one that got passed over 27 yeah. years in a row. <laughs> a bunch of times, yeah. But you know, uh, uh, this brings on more conversation. You know, they've got their own religion going. They deify one another. They give one another awards, you know. They're always complimenting one another. And I think, you know, if you don't like the way uh, this country is going, the course it's going to, then you quit. You need to quit pouring the money into these CDs or rappers. John and Penn is down in Venezuela campaigning with Hugo Chavez. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, Sean Penn is nothing but a communist. Yeah, he married Madonna. But he doesn't. Madonna he doesn't, had better. He got better taste. He doesn't him. realize that uh, if the communists overthrow a country, that people like him is going to be the first first yeah. ones to go. I don't understand that stupidity. Then you got all of these. Uh, uh, yeah. Ugg TV. Ugg TV. Hey, Brownie. Yes? Hey. Hey, Bob. Hey, hon. How are you? This is the seventh day. Of, for seven days. Right. I've pursued our boycott in China. Your phone's heading out. The first. Kimber the first. Hey. There are those that have pledged to buy nothing made in China. So how's everything up in the land of You're not yeah. going to buy anything made in China? No, not until after September the 1st, anyway. And you've got a problem so, with that. Let me tell you what it is. <laughs> if you start starving them Chinese, they're calling their debt, and we'll have to pay them. Well, they said that if 60,000, many 60,000 Americans would pledge to buy nothing phone, made in China. Your phone they, is cutting oh, out. Oh, oh. No, it's up here in the hicks and in the hills. We don't have good <laughs> service, is what it is. And it's working unless you're saying something important. Well, from August the 1st until September the 1st, there are those of us, and they say if 60,000 Americans would take the pledge to buy nothing made in China from August the 1st to September the 1st, that we could really uh, make, a dent, make a dent in the Chinese economy. And uh, there are those of us that have pledged to do that. So if, you, and if your listeners want to get on board, just climb aboard. They're all over Chick-fil-A right now. Well, I can't blame them for that, can you? Yeah. <laughs> they, may see, they may see some queers over there kissing while they're at it. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's always a possibility. If I had a chicken, I'd give you a flip switch so he'd have an Right. Yeah, well, I just wanted to reiterate that that's going on between August the 1st and I mean, September August the 1st. The 1st so. and September the 1st, don't buy anything made in China. We're boycotting Chinese products, yes. But I still worry that the Chinese have hard times they've called up their debts. Well, they would just have to uh, let the tree, uh, just cut the tree and let the chips fall where they may. Well, yeah, but 
Constipation in Chinese? What? Constipation? No. Hung Chow. <laughs> well, that's probably what they ought to call it. <laughs> Y'all are doing a good job. I appreciate getting to hear you. We appreciate you calling in. Just a minute. I don't guess we'll bring that tonight, but just say some stuff. Right? Yeah, right. Don't break the eggs till we get there. Yeah. All right, I won't take the biscuits out of the oven until I see you coming up the drive. Okay, see you. Bye-bye. And you have just enjoyed another wonderful episode of UGG TV and our ongoing quest for perfection and and superior knowledge. Right, and uh, we'll be doing some exposés on some exposés. So we're going to expose some experts for long. Yeah, we are. TTFN, folks, that means ta-ta for now. We are glad to see you tomorrow in. night on UG TV as well as on Channel 12 on, at WLAF. Yeah, you can watch us on UG TV on two different screens tomorrow night. Uh, if I can figure out how to unbroadcast, see you, folks.